And number 1982, Ariel Quigley. Leading the Mile High Club, we have co-captain, number 350, Jessica Rivas. And co-captain, number 90, Gabrielle Begelon. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's home debut of the Denver Roller Dolls Mile High Club. Coaching MHC, we have our coaches Scott Free and Dirt Monkey. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we invite you all to please rise and face the flag in the north end of the arena. Gentlemen, please remove your hats. Ladies, place your hands over your hearts. Foreigners, play along. To sing tonight's national anthem, please welcome from Fort Collins, Colorado, Jessica Gilman. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched Were so gallantly streaming And the rocket's red glare The bombs bursting in air Gave proof through the night That our flag was still there Oh, say, does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave? Ladies and gentlemen, Jessica Gilman from Fort Collins. Let's get ready for some roller derby, Colorado! The skaters are introduced, the anthem is sung. Welcome, DNN viewers, to Denver, Colorado. We're coming to you live right now from First Bank Center, the home of the Denver Roller Dolls. I'm Mercy Less, and I have the honor this evening of sharing the microphone with... The Juice. Right. Glad to be here. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. we got a good ballot lined up here for you. A couple uh, top ten teams. Gonna slug it out. Then it's time to start the night the roller derby. We've got jammers on the line already, getting ready to start this first jam. And for the Philly Roller Girls, number eight, Mo Payne, is taking the jam line. And they're going to send up their ace, 303, Heather Juicer, uh, for the Denver Roller Dolls. Got a good crowd here tonight. Quite uh, excited, getting loud in the glitter dome. We got my man Brad Example and Joe Mama doing the live call. The skaters were the stars on their head and back here are the jammers. The jammers are the back scorers. And we're off. Juska was out there for Philly. Juska's taking an inside line right now while Mo Payne makes her way on the outside up to the back of the pack. And both teams with a slow start off the line. Mo Payne running into some traffic there in front. Big man. With the hip check, no pain, able to stay on our skates. Wow. Juska, one one in the front of the pack. Yes, turns the corner, lead Gemma. So Juska got her first, and she was clean on her way to the pack. 
Mobane is still struggling at the front of the pack right now behind a two wall of Denver. Her teammates are doing their best to help her through. Euro Thrash is at the front trying to give her a hand. Now a three wall of Denver that she has to contend with. And Juska's already at the back of the pack making her pass for points. Yeah, there she goes, swerving around the egg, looking for some traction. Pack a little bit spread out. And she is able to clear it, looking for that grand slam. She's got it. Calls off the jail. So coming into this game, off the Wild West Showdown, DRD able to go 3-0 out there. They uh, beat Rose City, Rat City, and Sacred. Fully losing to Rose City and Rat City. So on paper, uh, DRD has got to have the advantage coming into this one. Although, quite often, it's, it's, it's only a two-year tradition, but uh, so far, it seems to a lot of us that Philly at Wild West Showdown is sort of using that as, as fertile ground for new experiments, new roster lineups, and strategy tests. Right now on the line for Philly is Goldie, number 87. Yeah, it looks like they're going to send up 719. Amanda Sharpless for DRD. Very uh, wily skater. Coming here to Denver by way of Colorado Springs. She's raced right up to the front, and she almost made it out of the pack, but Teflon Donna is pivoting right there at the front and is not going to let that through. That was a tremendous defense there. 85, Teflon Donna basically one-on-one -on -one there. Able to hold her, send her back into the pack to reset. And now running into that Stalin Mall with number 668, Olivia Face. Sage and Sharpless are holding Goldie at the back of the pack. They kept her as a goat for a little while. Her teammates have busted her out, but she's having a tough time passing quickly. And Goldie, there she goes. Had numbers up front. Now she's got the sky point for the lead jammer. And yes, both these teams have been hovering around the top five, uh, both tremendous programs, so you expect a good game, and also both these teams known for their defense. Wow. Wow. Olivia Face takes Sharpless down just as Goldie is taken down by Rivas. Yeah, Quigley there on that hit. And uh, wow, they're going at it to start this game. <laughs> we might quite possibly be talking to ourselves and entertaining each other right now as uh, some people here at the venue are reporting that there is no audio on the stream. We'll keep talking just for our own fun. <laughs> just in case. It's, oh, apparently we're... Okay, apparently we're good. One person out there in viewer land had no audio, but everybody else is okay. All right, so Goldie, still your lead jammer. However, it looks like Sharpless is already out of the pack, not lead. And Goldie still zipping around the horseshoe, peeking around the back, trying to see how much room she's got to make one more move. And then she elects to call off the jam. Smart move there. Billy picked up two more points, making this release. It's looking right now like that's a lead change number. Uh, Philly has seven points. Mile High Club, Denver with five. Just over 26 minutes counting down on the clock. Right now on the jam line for Philly is El Viento, number 22. So these teams met last year, and Philly walking away with a 13-point win. Great game. This should be an awesome rematch. Denver Roller Dolls have actually never lost here at home at the First Bank Center, so... Uh, First time for everything, but uh, it's going to be tough. They're on a real roll starting off this year. I was talking to a few friends from Philly earlier before the game, and I said I have absolutely no predictions about this game. I, this could be anybody's game tonight. Definitely. Philly's had a little bit of roster shakeups, a little bit of injuries, and, and quite an influx of new skaters, um, a whole lot of new talent on that roster. So it's going to be interesting to see what they're bringing for sure. And now they got Julie Adams with the star. Yes, indeed. Going to get that lead. And she is off to the races. Pat going at a fairly slow pace. Good opportunity for DRD to rack up some points. And number 22, El Viento, still unable to get out of that pack. She's got a couple of teammates up at the front trying to give her the assist. November James takes her to the outside just before turn one. That was number 15, Persephone, with the hip check. Trying to tie up Adams there at the back of the pack. Yeah. When the referee's arms go up like a touchdown signal, they're indicating that there is no... And James going skyward there trying to make the hit. Going airborne, wow. 
that are unable to get loose. It's going to be zero on the jam. Just over 24 minutes on the clock. Yeah, unable to score on that pass. He's going to pick up four points for the jam. So again, another lead change. Man, this game could be back and forth all night. <laughs> it could be every two minutes. Right now, number eight, Mo Payne, is on the line for Philly. Jamming against Juska, number 303 for Denver. If you're watching at home out there in DNN viewer land, um, the turquoise or light blue is Philly, and the dark navy blue with the silver shorts is Denver. Mo Payne taking to the outside in some jammer on jammer action. Yeah, excellent wall there, forcing the minor cut on Juska. And the last two defenders for Philly. They like to sandwich that pack with two in front, two in back. And they feel like they can hold that front of the pack with just two skaters and do it nicely there. I think it was Teflon Donna with the takeout, but going to earn a trip to the dungeon on the hit. Looks like Denver has lead jammer. Mo Payne has been recycled again to the back of the pack. She's making the approach almost the entire Denver pack up at the front right now. And shifting gears going to offense. And Juska looking to storm the swarm with the extra blocker advantage. And there she goes. Great slam. Mo Payne still alone fighting the three wall of Denver up at the front. They've got to let her go. Yeah, it looks like DRD trying to run that backpack trap. They got a skater goaded at the back. Michelle Castro, and it looks like possibly Ginger Vite is it? at the front trying to hold Juska, and she calls the jam. And Juska calling it a second early. Not sure if she could have got that last point if she had waited, but uh, playing it conservative there, not letting Philly's jammer get back into the bunch. And I was wrong. That was not Ginger Vitus. That was Alessa Evil. Right now on the line for Philly, looking like a solid jammer rotation for them tonight. It's number 87, Goldie. Yeah, definitely showcasing some new jammers in Philly. Looking pretty good so far. Coming out strong. And staying close here as we got an official timeout, I believe. I don't know if the cameras are catching it, but when Goldie's down on one knee like that, on the back of her right thigh, she has a Philly Liberty Bell with wings that you can see just perfectly below the hem of her uniform. Dance break for Quigley on the jam line. Denver Roller Dolls kids taking a chance to throw some t-shirts out to fan during this official timeout. We would like to, of course, during any official timeout, thank our wonderful, supportive DNN sponsors that make this all possible. Adam Wheels. Adam's first official hybrid wheel is here. What floor do you skate on? It doesn't matter. Poisons will grip anywhere. Poisons are available now in slim width and with aluminum alloy hubs. And the jammers are off. Whoa, three wall in the back trying to hold Quigley. She's doing her best to rush that line, but Persephone and friends are really trying to keep her trapped. Yeah, both these teams really do like the back wall. Sometimes they leave and back it up all the way to the jammer to try and crowd them off the line. Wow, up at the front, Begamon with the assist, and Quigley is out, but not lead jammer on a back blocking call. Goldie, meanwhile, is still struggling at the back. She just took a little bit of a face plant into the back of, I think, Begamon. And this is Denver's game right here. Slowing the pack down to the, to the grinded halt with their jammer out of the bunch. And that is the way you do it, trying to maximize the point scoring passes for your jammer. Begamon and Teflon Donna are joining another Philly skater in the box. And basically just folding the track in half here for their jammer right now. Looking for that grand slam. Philly, to their credit, keeping the pack tight with only two defenders out there. Number 15, Persephone, knocking her off the merry-go-round. And right now we've got Goldie still struggling at the back of the pack while Quigley is out for points. And Quigley there patiently waiting for the seam to open up in the pack. Finds her lane and hits it quick. Gets low, ducks under, another quick five for the DRD. Goldie's having a bit of a struggle, but it bears mentioning that she is a star up-and-coming rookie right now. 
first two games that she played were All-Star games before she even played a Philly home game. So she's some new talent to look out for. And veteran Denver skaters are giving her a hard time right now. But I imagine that this is her training ground that she's going to galvanize her into stardom skating. Indubitably. And, uh, yeah, she got Akers on her right now. Akers, one of the best in the biz, playing on that four spot. Right now she's got the pivot helmet, but you still see her patrolling in the back of the pack. And a very tough, staunch defender, one-on-one. -on -one. It's looking to me like Philly's been held to no points scored. If I can see correctly, 19 for the Mile High Club, 7 for the Philly Liberty Bells. No, I'm sorry. Update. And the points keep climbing. 36 Mile High Club with just under 20 minutes left, ticking down on the clock. Number 22, El Viento jamming for Philly. And they got 719, the Swiss Missile, Amanda Sharpless at the plate. El Viento leaps out for lead jammer, almost completely untouched. Right now, Sharp, so sorry, Copper Top, sister of Teflon Donna, took Sharpless down on the inside. Yeah, yeah, Philly coming out strong on this jam, answering back a little bit. 933, Ginger Vitus in the back, playing some excellent defense. Looks like 4-3 pack advantage Philly right now while Begamon is still sitting in the box. And Sharpless takes El Viento right down on the inside of turn one. She'll take a major forearms for that and she's headed straight to the box. So here we go. Good opportunity for Philly. Picks up that first grand slam on the full on power jam. They got the full five down to two for DRD. They pick up one out of the box. I believe that's Begamon. We have a monitor. Begamon has rejoined the pack from the box. Unfortunately, she's been replaced, I think, by another Denver blocker. And the Dolls trying to run the pack a little bit. Philly, very used to that as well. Trying to creep back in, maybe pick somebody off. And here they go, making their charge. Teflon Donna spearheading that one. Wow, a little bit of a pileup in turn one, thanks to Begamon. She's a one-woman pack destroyer in the back. Begamon, yes, very, very strong blocker and defender for the DRD. And uh, she was actually voted by the fans as the best uh, skater in Colorado. Wow, I, you know, I'm, I'm seeing that clearly demonstrated why anyone would vote that. Right now, uh, El Viento took a, a little assist from Copper Top, trying to propel herself to the front of the pack, but the two wall of Denver is pushing her out on turn one, and the jam ends on time. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I thought that she got the award. You know, I feel like you know, you could you could give it to Juska, but it's nice to for uh, somebody who's primarily a blocker to get it. You know? Absolutely. And it just shows, you know, if, if you're catching the fan's eye from the blocker position, you're really doing something special. It's also saying something about how well Colorado and Denver as a community are educating their fan base. You guys should be proud. Right now on the line, number eight, Mo Payne, jamming for Philly. We've got an official timeout. Angela Depp for Denver. And another official timeout gives us an opportunity to thank one of our other lovely sponsors, Antic Skate Boot, from the Green Monster family of products that you've come to know and love, including Gumball Toe Stops and Heartless Wheels and Berserk. You should try on an Antic Skate Boot anytime that you get an opportunity if you would like to experience the feel of cutting edge design, passion, and performance. Antic Skate Boots define your sport. Antic Skate Boots are made in the USA to the exact specifications and requirements necessary for today's modern roller derby skaters. And they're so pretty too. I have heard tell from many, many people recently that they are like skating on clouds, skating on cotton candy, putting your feet into the soft cushions of a lovely sofa, and even that it feels like slipping your feet into a pillow of puppies and kittens. So give those antic skate boots a try if you love comfort, style, and performance. We hope you don't need a lawyer, but if you do, please consider a rubber So it looks like we're going to start off the next jam with, uh, again, just like the last one, uh, Begamon sitting in the penalty box 
4-3 pack advantage for Philly right now. All right, we're about to start again. Once again, the German line for Denver, that's Adams, number one nine. And for the Philly Liberty Bells, that is number eight, Mo. You may notice that at the front of the pack, there are special blockers wearing stripes on their helmets. Those are the pivots. It looks like Philly holding that line this time, trying to slow down the pace. Mo Payne taking an inside line, and I think that that might have been Akers that yep. took her down on the inside of turn three. Akers wearing the stripe, scrapes another jammer off her skates. And it's going to be Philly back on the power jam. Adams picking up the major back block. So Philly, I think they picked up eight on that last jam. Another good chance here. November James holding her all the way out to 20 feet. Picks up a minor on it, but uh, valiant effort there. Philly's doing this pack play strategy that we've seen from them so far in every game at the beginning of this year where they are just really accumulating their entire pack in the back and defending. Right now it looks like they had Long trapped as a goat and Akers has come back to spring her free with Mo Payne right behind her. Hey, yeah, Philly, you know, obviously playing a little slow pack here on the power jam. Almost able to hop that apex, but Akers there to stuff it. Sends oh, her to the back. Something's wrong with uh, Mo Payne. It's, this is the third time that she's attempted to get up, and it looked like something was happening with her left leg. It also looked to me like that sandwich block that she took from James on the backmost Denver blocker um, actually caught her in the head a little bit accidentally. Oh. So. I'm not sure what the trouble with getting up was, if that was something in her leg. Oh, and it's happening man. again. She's trying to jump up. It looks like her left leg is just coming out from under her. And I, I was hoping that was uh, perhaps like a skate malfunction there, but I'm not sure exactly what's going on. Oh, I'm hoping so, under. too. Taken down again just after turn one. She's going to call off the jam now that Angela Death is back in the pack. Yeah, and in that situation, you might be best served to just call off the jam, okay, reset she's, it. And yeah, she's got a teammate jam. giving her the assist. Mo Payne is not the kind of skater that's going to drag herself off the track until she knows for sure that she can't get her legs under her, though. So she gave it a valiant try twice after being dropped down, trying to get on that left leg and get back up. It took her three tries the first time. She was dropped again just before turn three, and it took her one try to get up off that left leg and, and get going in the pack again. I just, it's, it's not her style. I don't think yeah, she's going to wow. get off the track unless she absolutely has to. Very, very tough exhibition right there. I'm not sure uh, what was happening. Hopefully we'll see her back on the track shortly. I hope so too. Right now, number 87, Goldie, is on the line for Philly. Skating against Juska, number 303 for Denver Roller Dolls. And it may have been a skate issue because they are taking her skates off and adjusting them. I hope so. I really, really hope so. Meanwhile, Juska blazing by the bunch. She's going to pick up that lead jammer. Goldie's being blocked in the back and is trying to make her way up the inside right now. Goldie. Like Begamon and Sage now joined by Rivas holding her at the front. Teflon Don is there to help her, but the pack's been destroyed a little. That's Dolezal getting in on the action there at the front of the pack, teaming up with the trio of DRD. Jusica going to sneak by in the confusion. An assist from Devoid of Mercy, and Goldie is out of the pack right now, about a quarter track behind Jusica. Full wall of Denver in the back, waiting. And Goldie slides up the inside just as Jusica pulls it off. A good hustle there by Goldie to pick up a couple of points. Yeah, her team looks a little pumped up after that jam. Great effort. El Viento to the line, taking on 377 Wilms. 36 24 Philly right now with just over 13 minutes on the clock. Sorry. And, uh, yeah, the Dolls changing up their jammers a little bit. This is Wilms' first chance to prance. Does not uh, jam too often, I don't believe, but uh, we're going to see what she does here with the star. It's early enough in the season, and this is a cross-region rivalry, so I think we're going to see um, a lot of new lineup changes and maybe some new strategies from both of these teams. Yeah, definitely trying out some new things here. Oh, there she goes. Oh, Viento playing some Frogger. And she's out the pack with the lead. And Hurt Reynolds is pointing out that we've got a Dirty Marty Palindrome score, 42 Fight Club. I'm sorry, <laughs> what did I just say? Mile High Club, 24 Philly. A dog, a panic in a pagoda. 
if we're doing palindromes. <laughs> All right, Wilms. There she goes. Working her way around the spiral. Wow, Vicky Cruz just pile driving into El Viento repeatedly until she calls off the jam. Yeah, you put anybody out there for the doll, Slick Vic doing it that time and uh, just laying out some beautiful hits. It's my favorite jam of the evening because right now on the jam line, my heart is pounding. It's Teflon Donna, number 85, jamming for Philly. Yeah, she's going to be taking on Shiny Sharpless there with the hat. Looks like we're starting this jam with 10 skaters on the floor. If you're playing the home version of the, jam, of the game, take a drink. Wow. Ooh, wiggles, waggles, horn swaggles, the whole shebang. Sharpless doing her thing. She's got the lead jammer. Teflon Donna making holes up the inside for herself. Jumps right over quickly on the inside. She's not lead. She's at about a half track behind. Wow, Sharpless takes down the two frontmost Philly blockers on her own, but is not freed from the pack and is, in fact, going to take a seat in the penalty box. Yeah, and that's a good call there. She tried to get low, tried to sneak under that hit, but went to went to her knees and uh, took out somebody's legs, so gets called on a major low hit. And Philly on the power jam. Teflon Donna is making her way up the inside, around the outside. She's taken to the outside by Rivas. And there you go, Rivas forces her out, and then the veteran move turns her back to force the major back block on one of Philly's blockers there. Sage is the last one to pass up at the front right now as Castro holds Rivas for her teammate to get out. And see, she made that hit, knocked her out of bounds. She knew somebody was going to come and try and nudge her off the track so that Teflon Donna would have that free ride. And now Rivas... She's going to take a seat on the Who's Go. 3-2 pack advantage to Philly right now on this power jam. Teflon Don is coming back up for the next points pass. Again, she's got only Sage to beat on the inside. Sage holding that inside line. Splendid lead. Those them all trying to get in there. And DRD running the pack. Sharpless is right back in behind Tef right now. Castro and uh, I think that might be Mo Payne in the back taking Sharpless down in turn one. That is the all on Sage trying to stay with throughout the 20. There's the whistle. Teflon and Donna picking up for. Once again, we invite you to sample a frosty red yard ale from the Wind Brewing Company. It's available at the concession stand. On the line again for Philly in turquoise, Goldie, number 87. So we're down to a snack pack here. We got the 303 jam. Two blockers each and the jammer. Adams is on the line for Denver Roller Dolls in navy and silver. So on the line for the Mile High Club, that is Adams number 19. Here we go, Cutler. Trying to get those blockers out of the box, it looks like. So yeah, we're back to three on three in the pack. Three Philly blockers hold hands and get ready to prepare for the jammer approach. She busts right through and almost, almost to the front of the pack. Straight to the penalty box, number 19. And Adams just uh, tried to bust through that wall, but Philly just too adept at stepping in front, taking the charge. And the yeah, instant major back block. Philly again on the power jam. And I just did an interesting maneuver there. I think under the arms of a couple of... Yeah, Philly, uh, excellent team at stage and a comeback. Still too early to call it that, but um, getting, staying in this game very nicely with that defense, forcing some penalties and staying on the power jam. Remember James taking her down on turn three to the outside and again now on turn four. She is up and right back in there. Uh, James Philly. takes her to the inside. <laughs> and Philly doing some goat herd in there at the back of the pack. Running that trap of their own, but uh, wow, just um, stand with her. They're holding Tracy Akers as best they can, but she's doing her best to get out of there. Finally, Goldie slips around Rebus on the outside. She's her lead jammer. Akers still being held by a four wall of Philly now at the back of the pack. Akers tries to take a sweep on her on the inside. Goldie makes it through, and here's Julie Adams back in 
Through, through but not lead on the inside, almost completely untouched. And Julie with that lightning move, just ransacking the pack. And here comes Goldie. That's going to be the jam. She did get her grand slam, though. Looks like going to bring it to, I believe, 41 Philly, 45 Mile High Club. <laughs> I keep forgetting. <laughs> And uh, Akers took a seat at the penalty box just at the end of that jam. So again, I think we're going to start off with a Denver pack disadvantage. It's looking right now like it's 4-2 in the pack for Philly. El Viento, number 22, lined up with Heather Juska, number 303 for Denver. Well, so far, pretty much what you're expecting. A magnificent game all the way around. Very disciplined, organized pack play. And both these prestigious programs showing off exactly uh, why they're at the top of the derby world. Philly tries to shut Jessica out in the back, and she makes herself a hole, makes it wide all the way up the inside, battles her way out of the front of the pack solo, and she's your lead jammer. Here is Dolezal long at the front, holding El Viento. She tries to make a pass on the outside, and she's forced to the outside. One standard of beat for El Viento. That's so 831 long holding there single handedly there in the front of the pack. Long is joined by Bojan. Taken down on the inside. Looks like a major Juska goal. trying to scram around the circuit here. Looks like El Viento is going to the box. Another hard hitter, Ginger Vitus. Sticking with her. She's on her like a yarmulke. Oh, sets up the stop and pop. Ginger Vitus with another big hit. Ginger Vitus has been saving up her love for Denver. She has been out on injury and is just recently back into action, just in time for this fabulous weekend in Denver. So she's got a lot of steam to blow off on both of these Denver teams this weekend. And November James with the assist. Cleared out a path for Juska. Does it again. She has three for a couple quick grand slams. Well, that, that's her real name, November James. I thought that was her derby name at first, but uh, wow, what a, what a great blocker there. Juska getting called on the minor back block. Oh, James with another huge takeout. She gets called for the flip-flop hit, but uh, that one might have been worth it. That was enormous. She joins Coppertop from Philly in the box. Looks like we've got just about a full Philly box as El Viento stands just at the end of that jam. That was a body slam. My goodness. All right. Denver Roller Doll is going to extend it out to 59-41. And they sure do maximize those power jams, really helping out their jammer. And uh, looks like we got Sharpless to the line to try to keep it going. Good strategy on the part of Philly right now and the, and the bench coaches and managers. We've got a two-woman pack of Persephone and Teflon Donna, and if any two skaters on that team could be an intimidating force as a solo pack, it's those two. That is uh, the penalty-killing unit you want on the floor if you're Philly. Begaman getting in there, trying to break it up. Teflon Donna is just sitting on Sharpless right now. Back and forth, she's swiping on her. Here comes Persephone at the front, but she's also trying to keep an eye on El Viento in the back, who's being held by a two-wall from Denver. Tough one, Donna, on her, like frosting on a cupcake, though not quite as sweet. And wow, that is, oh, Begaman and tough one, Donna going at it. And El Viento is back in the penalty box. This is a power jam now for Sharpless. Still being forced to the inside by Teflon Donna. She pushes Teflon Donna as Teflon Donna takes a knee and bursts out through the inside. She is being called the jammer. Yeah. Interesting. Wow, Sharpless just kept those legs churning, able to squeeze by on the inside. And there she goes, quick move to the inside. Another grand slam. Copper top, and it looks like fully automatic are back in for a Philly four-pack of blockers now. They're trying to line up in the back. Sharpless is trying to battle her way through. Fully automatic taking a nice block on her, but she pushed around with the help of her teammates. She's out for points. Yeah, we're just seeing some skating, skating out there on the track. All-out jam warfare. And Sharpless trying to double it up again. <laughs> Teflon Donna shows <laughs> the Denver skaters a little bit of the back of her skirt, a little bit of the front of her face, some moose ears. And Taunting Bigamon and Sharpless and Revis. And staying loose, having a good time, both these teams. They're very serious, but not taking it too serious, just having a 
Now Having a good old fashioned roller derby right now. El Viento somehow slips around Sharpless as well as Begamon up through the inside. She is not lead. And Sharpless calls off the jam. Wow, I've got to catch my breath here. My <laughs> that was really action packed jam. I don't think we were able to even talk through one fifth of what just happened. Yeah, both these teams showing a lot of canasta and uh, wow, just coming out here to skate. Right now on the line for Philly is Goldie, number 87, lined up against Adams for Denver, number 19. Score stands at 71 Mile High Club, 41 Philly Liberty Bells, with just over a minute and a half counting down on the clock. So Philly really going to want to answer here with a big jam of their own going into halftime. Down under a minute and a half left in this period. Julie Adams just pushing her way past Castro on the inside. Her teammates give her the assist, and she is out with lead. It took a couple of hard hits, but Julie Adams out in front, getting scrumptious around the circumference here. With only Cruz to pass, Goldie fights her way out of the inside as well. She's not lead and about a half track behind Adams. And she's really hustling, trying to plug in those skates and catch Adams. Oh, Adams bursts through. Calls off the jam. Gets some and gets done. She's going to pick up four on the pass. That was really impressive. That was a kind of deadly pack with Castro and Olivia Face. You know, three veteran Philly skaters, one very talented, fresh, brand new Philly skater. That was an accomplishment. We've got Teflon Donna, number 85, on the line again for Philly. Is that Monica Dolazal and a lot of her hair on the line for Denver? Yes, indeed. Danica Dolazal Danica. with her first chance with the star here at the helm. And I believe super, super crawly slow start as Persephone rejoins the Philly pack from the box. Uh, Danica's one of those girls who worked her way up from the B team here. Um, Breezing altitude, had an excellent second squad for the Denver Roller Dolls. And uh, she's got some skills. She's here on the Mile High Club making a contribution. Mopane and Eurothrash doing their best to keep Dolezal out of the front of the pack. And right now, it looks like Teflon Donna has been forced to the back by a two-wall of Denver. She hops around them on the inside. Eurothrash holds Dolezal while, while uh, Teflon Donna is out for lead jam. Yeah, she owes a lot of that to that thick uh, Philly front wall there. My goodness. Oh, just wow. a couple of feet out of 20 feet. It's going to get called a major number 47 Eurothrash to the box. 4-2 pack advantage right now to Denver with Philly filling up the box just a little bit. Here comes Tef on the outside. She takes her two points and calls it. Okay, ball is all coming around too quick. No choice but to call it there. Wraps it out. And there's the horn. That is the end of the first period. <laughs> it feels like it's only been about five minutes. I am in complete and total shock that we're already at the half. Yeah. This has been a wreck of both of us here. All out frequency between these two Rail top teams. Going wild for Denver. Early at the beginning of the game when we were doing a little bit of the pre-show, it, uh, it looked like from Brad Example's pop quiz that about a third of this audience is first-time Derby fans that have never been to about. So um, to me, it's looking like about, I don't know, what, 2,500 people in the venue right now? So that's a pretty sizable amount of new fans. Yeah, exciting got a, for Denver. Excellent crowd here, and what a what a game to pick to come <laughs> out to, man. This is uh, it's about as good as it gets. Absolutely, these are going to be season ticket holders by the end of the night. I feel certain. Yeah, and uh, they're in the right place too. This is where uh, the championship tournament is going to be held later on this year here at the First Bank Center. So uh, plenty of awesome derby action coming your way throughout the year. It's going to be super exciting. I can't wait to be back here in November. And of course right now heading into halftime we would love to take the opportunity here on DNN to thank our wonderful sponsors who make everything that we do possible. Starting with Fast Girl Skates, 
Best Girl Skates is the very first brick and mortar roller derby store. They offer the best in clothing, skates, and gear. If you're not fortunate enough to go hang out in their awesome Seattle store and get all of the best pro tips, you can get those very same pro tips on the phone, on the internet. They provide the same service through phone, internet, mail, email that they do right there in their store. It's just top quality personalized service from FastGirlSkates.com. When you are purchasing your new antics, make sure to have Fast Girl Skates heat mold them for you for a better fit, more comfort, and functionality. No charge to you if you shop with Fast Girl Skates. And right now, at this very moment, Fast Girl University coach Wiley Peyote is in Helsinki as part of Mayday in Hell. She's joined there by her business partner, La Petite Mold, and they are bringing all of the amazing things that Fast Girl does to the overseas community. So if you are an overseas international skater, please check out the personalized service that Fast Girl Skates has for you as they are out there in the world trying their hardest to support the international derby community and bring you as much derby as you can watch from over here on stateside. We'd also like to thank Adam Wheels. The Adam Juke wheels are perfect for flat track derby. The Juke 2.0 allows the skater to maneuver, speed up, slow down much, much easier. They also allow for quicker hockey stops and faster recovery. Try some today from Adam Wheels. Did you know that Adam Wheels are the number one replacement wheel for experienced skaters? If you can tell the difference, you want to go to adamwheels.com. And last but not least, of course, we would love to thank Antic Skate Boots. Antic Skate Boots from the guy who brought you Heartless Wheels and Gumball Toe Stops comes the freshest design in roller derby skates today. Antic Skates, the hottest roller derby skates on the market. Ask Fast Girl Skates, they cannot keep them on the shelves. You can check them out at fastgirlsgates.com or greenmonster.com. We're going to take a break right now and let you enjoy the halftime show here. We'll be back with more action in less than 12.
Ladies and gentlemen, once again, North Glen Percussion Theater! We want to give a warm welcome to skaters from other leagues who are here tonight. Colorado is a serious hotbed of roller derby, and our leagues not only all up and down the front range, but even on the western slope and in the southwest. The theme for tonight's bout is Earth Day. Did you take public transportation to tonight's bout? Come to our merchandise table and prove it, and you'll get a free DRD water bottle. Also, if you have questions about roller derby, please look for the skaters wearing the bright pink and bright green shirts. Those are our Ask It Alls. They would be happy to answer any questions you have about the Denver Roller Dolls or Roller Derby. To find out more, you can get on our email newsletter. That's going to DenverRollerDolls.org slash newsletter. You can sign up and get all the latest information about the Denver Roller Dolls. Or if you go to facebook.com slash Denver Roller Dolls and hit like, you will similarly be getting all the latest news about DRD. For more information about the league and our skaters, just go to DenverRollerDolls.org. Now, folks, we've got a few door prizes we would love to give away. So get out your ticket stubs. And Joe Mama and I will call out some numbers. Come with us. You're going to help us pick some amazing prize winners. All right, come on, guys. And we will place these prizes over at the ticket table at the north end of the arena where you can also pick up tickets for our next home bout right here in the First Bank Center, May 21st. All right, looks like I've got a gift certificate to Jinx. They are a great eatery located near our Twitter dome. Let's have one of you, what's your name? Sorry? Deja. Deja, go ahead and pick one. Don't, don't pick your own. All right, let's take a look here. I've got number 509. Seven, six, six. It's a $20 I, gift card to Jake's Denver. We love Jake's and they love us. Is, it, is that you? It's happy. Okay, we'll, we'll just, we'll put the tickets and the gift cards at the ticket table at the north end of the arena so you don't have to come and grab it right now because we need to get through these and get onto some more roller derby. Okay, we've got another $20 gift certificate to Jake's, and you are Destiny. Let's have you pick a ticket. Okay, ticket number is 356783. 356783. Go pick up your ticket. The ticket area. Yeah, we, we will put these at the ticket table later, so wait a few minutes and then go get your prize. All right, I want to actually have you guys hold the box here, since you're doing all the picking. All right, let's do two tickets to the Cinnabar. That's up north. Have a drink, have some food, or watch a movie. What's better than that? Go ahead and pick one for us. Okay, that's number 509785. 509785. Okay, let's give away another $20 gift certificate to Jake's. Destiny, your turn. We've got 509763. 509763. Another gift certificate to Jake's. Please pick one, ma'am. Ooh, look at that. Eye of the Tiger is playing. Number 420984, 420984. And then another two tickets to the Cinnabar, Destiny. Number 356700, 356700. 
And one, one more gift certificate to Jake's. All right, here we go. Number three, four, four, six, four, two, three, four, four, six, four, two. Yonder, come and pick up your prize at the ticket booth. And our last second grand, to, grand prize. Second to Lance. So we have something special after this. But this is from our awesome longtime sponsor, Fashionation. It's a pair of Doc Martin boots. We give you the box. You go to Fashionation and pick out the pair you want. All right. Who is the big wiener? It is number 356. Seven two six three five six seven two six. Come on by, claim your Doc Martin so you can look more hipster than me. And you'll ask, what could be more awesome than that? Well, we have here a hooded sweatshirt provided by one of our medical sponsors, 5280 Medical. And this is signed by every member of the Mile High Club. You're going to be looking good. The envy of all. So thank you to 5280 Medical for providing this. I think it's a little big for you, Ajax. Okay. And the grand prize winner, number 344-549. 344-549. Come and get your prizes. Find them at the ticket table at the north end of the arena. And while you're there... Pick up tickets to our next bout, Saturday, May 21st, right here at the First Bank Center. Thank you for everyone for coming out. Thank you to our sponsors for providing these wonderful door prizes. And we're back coming to you live from the beautiful and... Okay, we got another Amazingly yeah. full of people, First Bank Center here in Denver, Colorado, home of the Denver Roller Dolls. I'm Mercy Less. And I'm the Juice. And yes, indeed, this is a stellar venue to take in a roller derby match. We'll be back here in November. Come time for championships. Are you excited to be hosting champs in your hometown? Oh, yeah, man. This is a, this is a great venue. This is going to be a lot of fun. And, you know, uh, Denver Roller Dolls are going to be skating really hard. They really want to make it to the championships this year since uh, they're hosting it. So it would be, <laughs> be a great time to get here in front of their hometown crowd and strut their stuff. You were here during Westerns in 2009. How much of a toll do you think it takes on the host team when they're competing in the tournament and hosting simultaneously? Um, you know, as far as the skaters go, probably not too much because I think a lot of that's delegated to the support staff and the other skaters in the league. I mean, you know, these leagues have like each, you know, over 100 people in the leagues, I think. So, you know, plenty of plenty of people to help out. But, um, you know, it's kind of nice. You get to go home and stay in your own bed after each <laughs> bout. But, Absolutely. Um, and after the after party. Yeah. I'm I, having waves from Paul Stephanie, so I'm going to transmit those out to viewer land. Just in case anyone out there is waiting for hellos and loves from Paul Stephanie. You know, because those tournaments are, uh, I mean, they're an, an endurance challenge as it is, so it's kind of nice to have that extra advantage if you can. Any, every little bit helps. I'm not sure what we've got going on there. There's some fun footage happening on the Jumbotron. I just finished watching uh, equipment check on the Philly bench, so it looks like we're getting to the close of halftime right here. I don't see the Denver Roller Dolls back on the bench yet, but I expect that they'll be arriving any minute. Uh, the lovely Tex Castress next to me was pointing out that Mo Payne is in fact uh, wearing a lovely pair of custom color antique boots. From here, it's a little bit dark, but it looks to me like she is wearing the vegan antique boot in black and red. And I think we got an update and figured out what the problem was in that jam for her in the first half was the loss of a toe stop. So uh, nothing physical, nothing wrong, I don't think, physically with her. I think it's just uh, equipment. Absolutely, which we were really grateful to hear. Yeah. It seemed a little bit odd that the NSOs uh, grabbed the toe stop, knew it was going on, but it took her a little bit while to catch a little while to catch up and figure out what was happening. I think, and um, 
she did not elect to call off that jam, and you were saying before that that might have been a strategy move in that situation that would have set them up for another power jam advantage with a skater with two toe stops. Yeah, absolutely, because, I mean, she, she couldn't get anything going in that jam. She just kept falling down, kept taking a huge crash, and so it just would have been a, a much better serve, calling that one off, letting somebody go up there and, uh, you know, try and close out that power jam. Philly is taking some warm-up laps now as the referees come out and take center track. And Philly, they got a fun game coming up. If you're, gonna, if you're watching this from the Philly area, um, they're having a double header on May 7th next week, taking on the Texecutioners. And then their B team is going to play the Boston B team, so uh, that should be a fun one. That's going to be super exciting. If you're hearing a squeaky little voice on the text cast, that's uh, me and Hurt's little girl squirrel. She's here tracking penalties for us, trying to predict who's going to okay, end up boys. first to be ejected from the game, if at all. We'll take all the help we can get. <laughs> uh, here comes the Mile High Club. If you're watching this locally in Denver, they are going to have a game here at the Glitter Dome. May 21st, they're going to have a home game. So check that out at DenverLowerDolls.com. Go the first down center. Quite a number of uh, Rocky Mountain skaters in the house this evening checking out the competition for tomorrow's close bout. Just a little bit of the skinny on tomorrow. We had conflicting reports out of RMRG earlier this week as to whether or not there was robust enough internet to host the stream. As of this afternoon, it seems that we will have enough bandwidth to host the stream. However, we are still calling this bout cast tentative until we get it up and running tomorrow morning and prove that we can sustain that feed. We don't want to get your hopes up too hard, so uh, don't hate us if you get about 10 minutes and then a drop. We're going to do the very best we can to bring you that game between the number one champions in the world and the visiting Philly Liberty Bells. Yeah, that is going to be another exceedingly exciting game. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of teams, they like to double dip here and, you know, play, play all about these excellent squads and uh, try and run the gauntlet. And to my knowledge, nobody has ever came here and been able to beat both these squads. You know, if you can get no. one, that's pretty amazing. But When we were driving up here this weekend, too, we were talking about how it hasn't been that long since Denver became pretty much kind of an epicenter of the Derby universe. And I said out loud, you know, when's the last time one of these two teams wasn't in the top 10 and we had to think and we had to think hard and we did a little math and you know it's it's conceivable that this is probably the hottest derby city rankings wise on the planet right now yeah we got a wealth of derby talent here in colorado it's kind of like a, our colorado golden age of derby and so we're just trying to ride the wave and having a lot of fun and so, yeah, pretty good year to be hosting championships here, if you ask me. And, uh, <laughs> Castro's trying to get the dance party started out on the track. Yeah, man, they're ready to skate. The refs come moseying on out. Skaters are ready. Let's get this thing going. A little bit of a team talk over there on the Denver bench. Everybody giving a little bit of a cheer. I would imagine it involved the words or the letters, initials, MHC, and possibly FTF. We've got skaters lined up already. Another exciting jammer on the line for Philly, number 15, Persephone. She's going to jam against Jiska, number 303 for Denver. Complete dark in this venue. They know how to get the crowd started for the first jam. Oh, yeah. Roller Derby is jam-tastic. <laughs> Some lighting and jumbotron and audio action here to get the crowd rowdy and on their feet for the first jam of the second half. And the lights are back on, and these dashing damsels of the derby are ready to hit it again. Right now, there is a starting 4-2 pack advantage to Denver as the jammers hit the pack. Two Philly skaters in the box. Just out on the inside. She's her lead jammer. 
He's playing some derby pinball, that classic move, working it hard to the outside. A quick cut back to the inside, finds the lane, and uh, there she goes, ready to score some points. Three well of Denver at the front, just constantly knocking into Persephone. She's recycled to the back of the pack for the second time. James and Akers are back there. Castro is trying to give her the assist and helps her get back up to the front of the pack. She still has yet to break through that Denver three wall at the front. She's taken to the outside on turn three. Castro is being sent to the box as Juska is out with points. And James laying down a couple of huge hits during that jam. Helping her three. You should have to yell four before you make a hit like that. Vicky Cruz with a not so small fall and she's sent straight to the box from turn four. So the Denver Dolls coming out, firing on all cylinders. Juska turning this into a gargantuan jam. That's another high five. This is going to be a ridiculous amount of points she's accumulated for a jam that's got both jammers and a fair number of blockers on the track. Again, that Philly, the, I'm sorry, the Denver front wall is just really taking every opportunity to recycle in the front and then push Persephone to the back of the pack. Akers is currently holding her on the outside of turn four. And again, they have that wow. put on the pack. Hammer and nail from Akers and Begamon, and then Eurocrash takes Begamon to the outside, but she'll be sent to the box for that hit. And uh, pretty much nobody better than setting up that jammer in minimal formation than the roller dolls. And uh, coming out of halftime explosively, Philly going to call a timeout, and they break 100. That was a 3-0 jam. 30 points picked up in that jam for the Denver Roller Dolls. And smartly, Philly is calling a team timeout. That was jam buoyant. Again, this was both jammers on the floor. Um, for the most part, Philly was able to recover their blockers from the penalty box. At times, each team was up and down a blocker or two. But at some point in time, every skater in that group of ten was on that floor. It was not a power jam, and Denver picked up 30 points. That was amazing. Yeah, and that's what Juice could gives you, a longtime speed skater, and just putting on an orchestration there, thanks to some help from uh, great blocking up front. That brings our score to 100 for the Mile High Club, 41 for the Liberty Bells, with a stopped clock at 27:25. Now, Philly, they're known. They have they, they've had some huge comebacks. I've seen them come back. You know, put uh, make up a 40-point difference. But um, man, this may be too big of a hole to dig themselves out of. But uh, they got all the second half to try, and you know they're going to come out and not quit. Right now we've got Goldie, number 87, on the line jamming for Philly. And it looks like she is jamming again. I can't oh, that's going to be sharpless there. <laughs> trying to hide her number from the announcer's prior eyes. <laughs> Three on three in the pack right now. It bears mentioning, like we said before, that Philly is not only down a couple of veteran all-star skaters to injury, there's also a couple of their usual all-star roster that don't travel. Uh, this is their last travel game of the season, so they'll be playing with a full roster, mostly from home, barring some injuries. Um, so the, the Philly team that we see tonight, it's, it's likely a different Philly team than you're going to see for the rest of the season or at regionals. Yeah, and you know, they're still playing good. I mean, here's the thing is you take a proud team like uh, Philly and you plug in a bunch of different skaters and it's just a testament to you know, the discipline and organization they have as a team because they still come out here, play great derby, even with some new faces on the track. Excellent. You know, and, and the same goes for the, the Dolls as well. One thing that's always impressed me about them is, you know, they're not the, the biggest team, the strongest uh, you know, team, but they skate as a team and, you know, skate really well, skate really organized. So the entire pack was standing there killing time, waiting for their two skaters to rejoin them from the penalty box. Both jammers have hit the pack and are really doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one battle. It looks like Goldie made it all the way up to the front and was taken to the outside by Denver and recycled to the back of the pack by, I think, Quigley. Sharpless is up at the front trying to battle a Philly two-wall. Unfortunately, one of those two is Teflon Donna, and I think the other is Zero Thrash, so she's going to have a really rough time. 
Wow. Yeah, and a good pullback there by the Dolls, giving her that 20 feet of space. And, uh, just and using the Philly Jammer to yeah. do it. Just uh, some derby judo there. Here comes Goldie out of the pack. She took an assist from Shenanigan, who is a new skater on this roster. Sharpless gets into the pack. Sharpless hits the back of the pack and I believe calls the jam. And yeah, Korea's going to be in the big house to start this jam, I think. Uh, I think she picked up a uh, major uh, long directional hit there. Julie Adams, number 19 for Denver. If you're just joining us, Navy Blue and Silver is Denver. And the sort of turquoise or light blue color with black is Philly. And El Viento, number 22, is their jammer. May 30th at Double D. Philly again with that solid front wall. Wow. Wow, El Viento just picked her way around the pack. Shot up the inside. She's your lead jammer. Julie Adams is out about a half track behind her. There's a 3-2 pack advantage right now for Philly. But uh, the two Denver skaters, Akers and James, oh, now joined by Rebus. So 3-3 on the pack. Copper Top, Tef Teflon Donna's sister, also new to the roster. Right back in there in the pack. El Viento gets her hips past a couple of Denver skaters and calls it. Oh, so she's going to pick up that ghost point, too. Going to be three on the pass. 102, Denver Roller Dolls, 44, Philly. Just over 24 minutes on the clock. All right, Mo Payne. Adjusted, ready to go. Holding up some kind of hand signal. Right, she's showing three fingers on her left hand and one on her right. Juska, number 303 for Denver, jamming against her. Juska coming off that sensational jam to start the second half. Let's see if she can put an encore performance together here. She's trying to run up through the inside. She takes the outside around Mo Payne with the assist from her front wall, and she's her lead jammer. Heather just got The doll's kind of content to not engage the pack and just you know split the pack into two different sections, let their jammer go to work, and uh, found her own route there. Jiska passes two Philly blockers and calls off the jam just as Mo approaches the back of the pack. And going to hit it and quit it, as my friend Dump Truck would say. <laughs> he couldn't be here tonight. I think he's uh, passed out in the Hollywood Hills and Charlie Sheen's mansion or something. <laughs> right now. I wouldn't doubt that he's leading the charge over there, winning and ruling. However, I have to say, as much as I love you guys and as much as I love Denver, there is a hole in my heart tonight. Something is missing, and it's Dump Truck. <laughs> It is not the same. I, it's, I expect to see him running around here. It's really, it's it's a different venue without him on the mic. And that is not to say anything about the fantastic Joe Mama and Brad Example holding it down on the house call. I just miss him. I miss his dress. I miss his adorable hat. Big old dude in shiny tight pants. <laughs> Can't replace that. I liked his Mile High Stewardess uniform the best. <laughs> Quigley on the line, number 1982 for Denver against uh, Goldie, number 87 for Philly. Yes, Quigley, Quigley, the multi-threat for the Dolls. Picking her way into the pack, takes a spill there. Wow, who is that, number 47? Euro Thrash with the takeout. Alessa Evil gave her a little hip check that took her right down to the floor. Goldie going to roll on out. Plummets through the pack for the lead. Alessa Evil and Euro Thrash doing an excellent job of keeping Quigley in the pack right now. Euro Thrash is pushing her to the outside, but doesn't quite take her to the outside of turn three. A lot of jostling. Persephone almost manages to keep her in the pack, but she's out and not lead more than half a track behind Goldie right now. Goldie is fighting her way up through the inside. She gets the assist at the front. Uh, yes. Takes her points and calls it. Well, that's what you got to do to try and climb back into this thing. Get your four. Say no more. She's back to the bench. El Vienno going to try and pick up where she just left off. And Sharpless. Number is she 719 or 779? Yeah, 719. That's the area code there from the springs from oh. which she goes. So uh, the BRD is sticking with that uh, 
area code theme numbers. And, and isn't Utah in town tonight playing Pikes Peak? Uh, I'm not sure. I didn't hear about that. I think I might be saying the wrong league name, so forgive me. I think that Wasatch might be okay. the name of the league. Yeah. It's there playing tonight in Pikes Peak. That should be a good matchup. Again, super tiptoe, teeny tiny crawling, just barely moving forward pack. El Viento is signaling her teammates, go, go, go. Yeah, and that's, I think, what she's got to do. Philly, you know, coming slow off the line. They don't want to waste any time. There's only 20 minutes left in this thing. Big uh, point differential make up, so they got to they gotta get going. Sharpos tries to barrel through a three wall of Philly at the back of the pack at the beginning of this, but They've managed to actually keep her in the back so far. Meanwhile, El Viento is battling on her own with a two wall of Denver at the front. Yeah, and that's Dorado there on her hip. Gets the push from Revis. And uh, Sage, Sage takes her to the wow. outside on turn one. Yeah, very. She's only got Sage to beat, and Sage is well over 20 feet ahead of the pack now. Lead jammer goes to El Viento. Yeah, great. Great effort there by Philly. They pull the pack back, give the 20 feet, and now they got a good chance to try and negotiate a grand slam on this pass. Sage moves Teflon Donna out of the way so that Sharpless can make her way up through the pack. She's out of the pack and not leave. And, you know, they had her and something happened where the whole pack kind of stumbled. She was able to blaze by. But still a good jam for Philly. Four points there, exactly what the doctor ordered. Absolutely. And Dolezal taking a seat in the box at the very end of that jam. So I believe she'll sit a full minute in the next. That's leaving Philly right now with a 4-2 pack advantage with powerhouse Mo Payne, number eight, jamming on the line for Philly. Equal powerhouse Julie Adams jamming number 19 for Denver. And here they are on their knees, precisely what I said, you know, trying to start this jam right away, utilize every second left in this bout. Looks like um, Denver is in the back trying to do a little shut the door on Mo Payne, and they slid over and shut that door, but Mo managed to wiggle out from between both of those blockers at the back. Julie Adams sent to the box. Mo Payne is lead jammer and suddenly on a power jam. Yeah, and now here's the problem with that strategy when you're down and, and you know you don't have the blockers on the track is that you try and form that back wall your jammer gets uh, sent to the box they're on the power jam whoa yeah. acres push mo Payne out on turn three and then back the pack halfway up the straightaway so that mo had to come back and inside again they've pushed her out again again taking up half that straightaway and see, like, like I'm trying to say, like normally you set yourself up to get power jam over and over because you're already stuck. You're stuck in the back of the pack. Right. But you're saving grace in this instance is you got a skater like Akers who's so dominant one on one. And I've seen it a hundred times. Hold the back of the pack all by yourself. You really got to put a couple bodies on her when you're on the power jam if you want to help your jammer get loose. We're three three in the pack right now and about to be four three advantage Denver. Philly waits in a wall in the back for the fourth Denver blocker. Akers doing everything she could to stay in front. Got a little tripped up. She's going to get called on the low block. She's in the low pen. Here comes Julie Adams to the back of the pack from the penalty box. Three wall of Philly ready to hold her. She bursts right through but is taken down on the inside, I think, by Castro on turn two. Yeah, Akers, phenomenal to start that jam. Did everything she could and... Uh, you know, got that trip to the box. Copper top with the assist on Cruz at the front of the pack to get Mo Payne out for five more points. And did Julie Adams just take a seat in the box again? That looks like a full box for Denver. Persephone standing in the penalty box and now rejoins Philly right at the end of that jam. And there's the whistle. Uh, Philly did not get any points on that last pass, but they're going to be on the full-on power jam to start this one. And there's El Viento. Congratulating each of her teammates as they come back to the bench, telling them awesome jam. That was a pivotal jam for Philly in this period so far. Yeah, and uh, here you go. They're creeping back into it, cutting that lead back down to 38. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. So uh, we've got the Philly lineup on the track. This is looking like a team timeout for Denver. Looks like Goldie, number 87, is going to jam next. And uh, we'd like to, of course, take this little timeout opportunity to thank our 
major sponsors whose contributions make everything that we do possible, including all of the amazing coverage from three continents this weekend on DNN. We'd like to thank Adam Wheels. We'd like to thank Antic Skate Boots. And we'd like to thank Fast Girl Skates. Fast Girl Skates currently in Helsinki right now at Mayday in Hell, um, helping coach and also helping play. If you caught the exhibition bouts earlier today, Wiley Peyote, who coaches for um, Fast Girl U and is an all-star skater for Rat City Roller Girls, as well as one of the owners of Fast Pro Skates, is there doing what she does to support... Oh my gosh, okay, so it looks like we're back in action. The entire Philly pack backed up to the jam line with only two blockers to beat on Denver. Looks like Goldie is out quickly with lead jammer. Quickly goes to the box, and so does Teflon Donna. It's a 3-1 pack advantage to Philly right now. Only Rivas to beat. Here comes Goldie on the outside. Yeah, we could definitely see a ginormous jam here from Philly. And you see that move that they make. That's a signature Philly move off the line where they all slide back and get right in front of the jammer. Akers rejoins the pack. Still a 3-2 pack advantage right now for Philly. It's Olivia Face in there trying to block for her jammer. Make sure that Goldie gets up through the front. Rivas taken down on the inside by Goldie. Rivas and Akers to pass at the front right now. Here comes Zero Thrash, ready to get up there and help her jammer. Right then, I think Rebus took Goldie to the back of the pack. She is headed to the penalty box. Just as Julie Adams rejoins the pack, Power Jam Denver. Yeah, that was just some wicked uh, shorthanded play by Denver. Staving off that assault. I don't know how they did it, but now the flip-flops, they're on the Power Jam. Oh, Olivia uh, Face is now headed to the box for Philly well, after taking down Julie down Adams on turn two. Uh, Teflon Donna with a enormous takeout as well, but Adams going to slip by. Coming around the cylinder, she's got five. Three wall of Philly in the back trying to hold Adams. And very slow, very methodical. <laughs> oh, musical jammers. Adams has called on a major block block on Teflon Donna. She's going to sit down, and now Goldie, number 87 for Philly, re-enters the track. And, uh, there's the whistle. Wow. Jam of a jam there. <laughs> was that like four jams in one? I'm not sure. I couldn't even see everything that was happening. Oh, man. It looks like our score right now is 110. Denver Roller Dolls, 72 Philly Roller Girls with just under 15 minutes left on the clock in this second period. El Viento jams alone, number 22 for Philly. Shazam, what a pace to this thing. <laughs> back and forth, Philly battling back. Let's see what they got here on this power jam. 4-2 pack advantage for Denver, so I imagine this is going to be a difficult jam. Uh, they got their defensive powerhouses out there too, Begaman. They're out in front. I think that's James and Akers with her. Making the three wall in the front. Oh, Cruz as well. And Cruz going to go out on the fourth minor. Let's see if that helps make a difference for Philly here. Julie Adams is standing in the penalty box. Copper top putting the hit on out in front, trying to assist her jammer. And still just the skate stuck in the mashed potatoes. Can't get through. Our jam for Philly is over. Oh, nice Julie move. thought she was going to sneak up the inside, but Persephone and her hips were waiting for her. James with the clear out. Adams has the lead jammer. And uh, she needs to write a thank you note to James for that one. That was gorgeous. Excellent. And... Uh, the dolls keep recycling to the front of the pack. Good water falling. Just keeping that cascade going to the front. So now Bigamon is and Bigamon earning another trip to the penalty box. They're going to engrave her name on one of those seats this game. <laughs> yeah, they've been in the paddy wagon quite a bit this bout. Very contentious bout going back and forth. Adams going to pick up five at the buzzer. 
Denver picked up a few points there. So we got a full team double header next time. Heather Once Jessica again, taking the line, number 303 for Denver. Your birthday boy tonight. And she's gonna P be on the PJ to start the this one. 4-3 pack advantage for Philly. Denver taking a knee. He says, let's party. Let's do that at the after party tonight. Line, a wall, a four wall of Philly waiting for Jessica in the back. All of her teammates try to break that wall and do so successfully. She's got Tef Castro. And it looks like you're a crash, baby. No. Uh, you know, Philly, just an excellent tight ball there. But the Dolls using it against them, grabbing the goat, running that trap, and getting Juska free. And there she goes to a mountain of a swallow wow. for the ground slam. Rebus is going to go take a seat in the penalty box as Box's Begamon is standing. El Viento now standing in the penalty box. Wow, and it looked almost like Juska just pushed half of Philly into a face plant. I hit that pack like a bowling ball. Devoid of Mercy is headed to the penalty box. We got the demolition derby in full effect here. Here comes El Viento in the back of the pack. Quigley and Long holding the doors open. Going to be another grand slam to end the jam. No pain on the track to try and stop the bleeding. Sharpless taking her on. Mo Payne again signaling three fingers on her right hand, one on her left to her team. Mysterious signals. And, uh, you know, those last couple of jams, that's what you like about the Denver Roller Doll skating style. I, I think of them as the psychic connection because they just skate as if they're all reading each other's minds. Hive mind. <laughs> You know, they, they know exactly oh, what the strategy wow. is. Wow, so some amazing play. frontal action from Persephone on the Denver blockers at the back of the pack, trying to free her jammer as Sharpless gets sent to the penalty box. Fourth minor, minor cut. She's in the coop. Mo Payne is out with lead on this power jam for Philly Roller Girls. Three on three in the pack right now. Oh, Mo Payne running in. Looks like she took down, is that Begamon? Uh, who hopped here. right back up to help block well, that was Dolezal. Wilms. That was Wilms that took that hit. A lot of contact, no call. And the refs really letting them play here. Mo Payne leading the break. Five point, grand slam for Philly. She is racing around the track. Philly had a goat in Rivas. She freed herself, and now there's a four wall of Denver at the front. About 10 minutes remaining on the Mo Payne, yes. Flamboozles and flummoxes the flock. Creeps around that outside edge. Sharpless is standing in the penalty box now. Four wall of Denver at the front. And they're doing the right thing. They got the good position there. Uh, able to race the pack a little bit. Devoid of Mercy and Olivia Face trying to get up in that four wall. And they're racing the pack even faster to prevent them from breaking that wall. And there you go. DRD doing the right thing. Sharpless out of the box. Philly is going to hold her in the back with a two wall. Devoid of Mercy is trying to break up that four wall of Denver at the front all by herself. And... Help slide Mo Payne through on the inside. Face and Ginger Midas doing some blocking at the rear. Looks like Rivas went back to help her teammate in the back. Olivia Face, Ginger Midas has been all over the track and uh, set up the embargo to shut the jammer down on that jam. And uh, exactly textbook jam there for Philly. Score right now is 132 Denver Roller Dolls Mile High Club, 83 Philly Roller Girls Liberty Bells. They are uh, constantly closing that gap, and then we've got Denver <laughs> opening it back up again. Yeah, that's just the thing. Philly's just going to keep on coming the whole time, very season. They've, uh, you know, they've been in all the tournaments and they're always hovering around that top five or in the top five. Proud team. They have that uh, great win against New York a couple of years ago where they stopped their streak. <laughs> uh, that was one of the best games in the history of the sport. Oh, yeah. 
So they were ranked number one for a while. So they've been there. They don't panic. They just keep on chugging along. Goldie forced to the outside already, but quickly also being taken to the outside. Neither jammer advancing easily through this pack, but right now Goldie's at the front with only look like acres wow. to pass. She managed to slide around her on the outside. She's your lead jammer. Putting on the moves like prom night. Uh, not a lot of people slip the noose like that around the acres. Goldie strutting her stuff here. Teflon Donna had taken quickly to the outside, but she got an assist from her teammate to the front. She is out and not lead over a half track behind Goldie right now. Yeah. She's closing that gap. Goldie's taken down on the inside of turn one and calls off the jam. Good call off there. Gets her two. She's through. And El Viento, number 2-2 two -two at the line. Coincidentally enough. Management on the Philly bench is uh, having a little dance off. El Viento, number 22 on the line for Philly. Number 303, Heather Jiska for Denver Roller Dolls. That is Juska, number 303 on the line for the Mahaipo. Looks like we've got a full pack for both teams right now. El Viento is fighting her way up through. And they have just the tight throng there to start these jams. And they got the majority of their pack in play. Wow, just a right around El Viento with an assist from Sage on the outside. She's your lead jammer. Uh, tough slot in there for El Viento in the pack. Getting some help from number here. Uh, Vivas has pushed out of bounds to the outside. 47. Euro Thrash helping her out. El Viento's got only Sage to pass at the front. Euro Thrash mixes it up so that she gets right out. Juska is now out of the pack and on her tail. You can absolutely expect that Juska's going to get up in there and try and defend. Yeah, Juska's got four. She's pleading for the fifth. And she's not going to get it. Calls it off. As they're about to hit the pack again. Wow. Mo Payne, number eight, lining up for Philly. Against Sharpless, number 719, for Denver Roller Dolls. And we got some sweet derby action here for you. Thanks for tuning in to Derby News Network out there in Derby Land. We appreciate y'all. 136 for Denver right now, 85 for Philly with just over five minutes left on the clock. Jammers are away, but Tootie Tin Whistle makes a better door than a window. <laughs> well, Sharpless defenestrating herself through a window there. She's got the lead jammer. And just uh, shot her way through that throng strongly, and she is gone. Mopain fights her way out past Begamon and is not your lead jammer, but freed from the pack. Here comes Sharpless for points. Three wall of Denver at the back ready to give her the assist. Philly in good position out in front. Let's see if they can race it a little bit. Maybe negate this. Oh, wow. wow. Begamon clears part of the Philly wow. blocking roster at the front. Begamon cracking skulls like a paleontologist on that jam. Serious faces on the Denver skaters right now. There was a little bit more taunting, teasing, and fun in the first half, but this is all business right now. Yeah, it's uh, another day at the office. <laughs> Goldie, number 87, on the line for Philly. Julie Adams, number 19, for Denver Roller Dolls. Adams out there to jam for All right, Philly with the one blocker advantage to start this one. Liberty Bells hosted the WFTDH. Philly builds a wall at the front as the Jammers hit the pack. The Dolls forming that back wall as they are wont to do. Goldie makes it all the way up to the front. She's got Begamon and Quigley to beat. Oh, Dolezal and Quigley, sorry. She makes it out around Dolezal on the outside of turn four and is your lead jammer. Right, great trap and slap there. Good defense, but better offense from Goldie. And Goldie really coming out here and uh, showing why she's made this Philly All-Star roster. Absolutely. Goldie, ole. Missing a defender there. Shedding defenders, but finally Quigley able to catch a piece and knock her off. Looks like Quigley and Revis at the back trying to hold Goldie. 
Here comes Adam trying to get up through the front, but she's got Teflon Donna and Eurothrash to beat. Sage is in with the assist, but I'm not sure that this is going to happen. Whoa, she finds a hole on the inside thanks to Sage, and she's out around Eurothrash. Yeah, Reva's doing a phenomenal job stealing off the inside lane. Teflon Donna is all over. Quigley pushed out of bounds on uh, turn one. An additional four points for the Liberty Bells. All right, so uh, that's going to bring it up. 89 for Phil, 138 for Denver Roller Dolls. And uh, two and a half minutes left. It's going to have to be a couple Hail Mary jams, but uh, Denver Roller Dolls so far carrying the day. El Viento, number two on the line for Philly. Sharpless, number 719 on the line for Denver. Uh, it's looking like an official timeout right now. Denver Roller Dolls with all three team timeouts right now. Philly Roller Girls with two. I'm imagining that we're gonna see some expert veteran clock management throughout the last two minutes of this game. Two minutes and 10 seconds on a stop clock right now. Yeah, you know, they might, you know, during a tournament or something, they might try to kill some time, but I, I think we'll probably just see both these teams skate head to head and uh, keep going at it to close this thing out. Full packs for both teams. Philly takes a knee. Suddenly we've got a three wall of Denver in the back. One skater's on a knee right behind the Philly skaters on their knees. Disco Acres, as she is wont to do, shaking it up at the front of the pack. Yeah, and uh, it's a good nickname for her. She can definitely ring your bell bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> I killed it. <laughs> and me too. We're like a perfect comedy team because I'm a total simpleton and anything that you say is going to slay. I'm going to laugh my head off. Oh, here he comes, Philly, trying to crowd that jammer line. It's just snuggle time is what it is. Yeah. They've backed up to snuggle. Denver has to. It's all love right now. El Viento about, I don't know, three feet behind the jam line. Sharpless backing up to snuggle her. It's uh, a lot of free whistle action here. I'm liking it. A little bit of games womanship to start this jam. <laughs> this is just the cuddliest pack start I think I've ever seen since champs at least. Oh, yeah. And now we've got three Denver skaters backed all the way up to the jam line. And I think this uh, official timeout kind of worked in Denver's favor here because they were able to uh, respond to that Philly tactic of scooting back, and now they got their own back. This is starting to look like a game of chess. About every three seconds, they're moving positions, readjusting, standing up, taking a knee. <laughs> El Viento is gunning in the back of the pack. Wait Ready for, for the start. It. Wait for it. All right. And everyone is up on their feet. Jostling. Sharpless slips around two Philly blockers and runs out the front of that pack for lead jammer. And the crowd loves it. El Viento. Oh, El Viento almost blocked her way out of the inside of the pack. Took a fall. Black, it looks like she's got a back blocking call and she's taking a seat in the penalty box. Power jam, Denver. Philly four wall at the front until number 39 is excused. Shenanigan will sit in the box with her jammer. Yeah, Sharp was showing us why she's called the missile. And uh, just snaking her way through that pack. Persephone's holding her. And Persephone, great game. Jammer of the year in 2009 for Philly. And uh, wow, she's uh, she's came out here and done it on the defensive end and the offensive end. Little hammer and nail where uh, Persephone takes a swipe on Swiss Missile and uh, Akers is right in there to nail Persephone to the outside. She'll take a back blocking call and take a seat for a full Philly box. 
And uh, Sharple's going to reset. Looks like Gingivitis has taken her to the back of the pack. Snack pack is on. Philly staying in front. Fully automatic. Last line of defense. Oh, almost got her. Knows the moves, knows who's dangerous, and team up on Persephone. They're in the right position to hold El Viento back, but now El Viento's got only Cruz to pass at the front of the pack. Cruz is just swiping back and forth at her. She's relentless, but El Viento has to be let go. And Cruz to the box for relentlessness? I don't know. Uh, I didn't see. Not sure, yeah. Sharpless holding her took is kind of pulling up here. Not sure if she took a shot or not, but um, there's the whistles anyway. Jam ends on time. We got 18 seconds left. Let's see if we uh, see a timeout for one more jam or if we're just going to let this one close out. And nobody making a move. I see Mr. Williams, Paul Stephanie, standing there. Gathering his team. It looks like they're going to let that one run down. The crowd is on their feet. Going insane for Denver. Love and kisses to Derby Land from Tootie Tin Whistle. And a stellar bout. Everything it was billed as. A couple of top ten teams. Rock and Sock and the Denver Roller Balls. Currently ranked number four in the nation. Taking their victory lap. How about that? And it looks like the final score on this game, 143 for the Denver Roller Dolls Mile High Club, 89 for the Philly Roller Girls Liberty Bells. In other recent official DNN scores, we've got Naptown Roller Girls, 167. Their DNN rank is number 23. Over Cincinnati Roller Girls, 94, the number 16th ranked in DNN. So there's an exciting upset. I know that Strawberry Jam ahead of this game was predicting a win for her team, her former teammates. And uh, she got this one right. That is and a, a really substantial win. Uh, usually we cheer for the DNN power rankings. We want our rankings to hold, but that's a pretty exciting upset. Go Naptown. Yeah, it's harder and harder to call, especially uh, you know, with those rankings at that. Because those teams don't play each other all the time. But, um, <laughs> yeah, it's a good match. A good upset. And uh, hey, if you're at home, take one more swig for Philly. Absolutely. This was an amazing and exciting game. I still sort of can't believe how quickly this game went by. A lot of action. Um, I can't believe it's over. <laughs> so, you know, you're going to want to stay tuned. Um, not the same time, but certainly the same channel. There's a lot of exciting derby action going on tomorrow. Again, we're bringing you action from three continents tomorrow. Um, but my game that I'm excited about tomorrow is uh, my beloved number one world champion Rocky Mountain Railway Girls taking on my old once upon a time big sister league when I was back with Charm City. Billy were our big sisters and uh, so I'm excited to see all of these people that I love play each other tomorrow at the warehouse. Yeah, what time is that game at? It's uh, 11, 11 a.m. 11 a.m. Uh, mountain time. Yeah. So uh, if you have not yet gotten your DNN account on the website, please go sign yourself up for an account. That way, when you log into the live page, uh, if you've chosen the correct time zone that you live in, all of our bouts that are live on the live page will come up in the proper time zone for you. Yeah, get up early, brew some coffee, check that one out. That is going to be an encore of awesomeness tomorrow. I am super, super excited. Once again, we would like to thank our fantastic DNN sponsors, starting with Adam Wheels. You know, it's the official wheel of the WFTDA. It is the most purchased replacement wheel out there on the market, especially amongst veteran skaters, skaters who are in the know. You want Adam Juke Wheels. You want Adam's Hybrid Wheel Poison. All of these fantastic wheels, along with the beautiful, sassy, comfortable, and amazing performance skate antic boots, can be purchased at FastGirlSkates.com. Yeah, you got some uh, legendary names associated with those three sponsors there. I mean, Absolutely. Uh, World champion skater yeah. Adam Matrix, also known as Julie Glass, bringing you all of her years of experience in the form of science and exceptional wheels. 
we've got uh, several time champion jam skater, all around amazing television and now men's roller derby skater Mo Quadzilla Sanders is bringing you the Adam Skate Boot. And of course, the founders of Fast Girl Skates, some of the original tournament championship and tournament place winners and Rat City Roller Girls are bringing you the amazing skate shop as well as training unit that is Fast Girl University. Yeah, check those out and uh, keep tuning in to Derby News Network for all your Derby News needs. Here at DNN, we're on a mission to fuel the growth of modern roller derby. Find out more at derbynewsnetwork.com slash mission. You've been watching viewer-supported Derby News Network. If you're enjoying this weekend's live coverage, please consider making a contribution to support future DNN coverage. We can't do it without you, and we thank you so much, you, the viewers, for your support. Yeah, absolutely. Derby News Network, you guys have been the place to be, really uh, helping put Derby on the map. And thank you so much for bringing us all these great games world worldwide. We live and breathe to bring you all these great games, so thank you for affording us the opportunity to do it. It has been an honor to call this game yeah. with you, The Juice. Likewise, thank you very much for having me. I am The Juice and uh, Merciless. I really appreciate the opportunity. And, and so here from the... Uh, Hebrew Brother and Sister Club at the end of a beautiful Sabbath. We are signing off from Denver, Colorado until tomorrow.